So, okay, first we have a login, which is right here. And we'll press that arrow on the uh, thing to put that to the side. So, yeah. the, the, current, the current PFAS website was, uh, it's Mike uh, Zazon developed it. It was in, uh, developed in WordPress. And uh, so we just added some functionality to the WordPress site to deal with. Um, Nick will explain a little bit more here. But just to give you an idea, it was built in WordPress. Okay. Okay. One, two, three, four. I hope I remember this password correctly. Yes, I do. Okay. This is the dashboard. We'll just go back to the site, which is right here. So, uh, the purpose of the site is to sell single runs of the PFAS uh, program uh, as a run through a service. We have uh, two services set up. One runs the uh, actual processing and one sends email notifications uh, that are produced for, upon success or failure of the initial uh, check of the uh, submission. Uh, to submit a PFAS job, after they log in, come to the site, they can submit a PFAS job for this handy dandy link there. Um, it will ask you to create a project which will subdivide into Either, either offer a selection of projects uh, they can choose from the, so they can do multiple runs of a specific site and group them all together or they can create a new project that their project name with their choice and just okay. give you, just to give you an idea these pages uh, the code for this were t uh, template files that we um, added code to and uh, this PHP code to make all make all this screen here for the upload fields and to handle the uploading okay. So we add it, create a project name, or we choose one that currently exists from the drop-down box. We add a submission title, and then we choose our file for upload, uh, which if I can find our that's resolved. So oh, you may have to read, you may have download from Drive. Download from Drive. Okay, yeah. Google Drive. One second. All right, we're gonna we're gonna pull up Google Drive real quick. We got some. Uh, Example input files that we're going to run through it just to show you. Okay. Okay. Test files, and we have demo. Uh, nope. Uh, go up one. Top one. To go okay. to final documentation. Final documentation, and, and we have top one. Top few fast demo files. Okay. We have one that's valid, and a few samples that are invalid and reduce errors. We'll go ahead and grab all of them. Download. Download all items. Items to okay. Let me complete downloading shortly. If you have questions, don't be afraid to interrupt or whatever. Yes. Okay. It, will, uh, it keeps me from sounding awkward. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I can I can <laughs> hope, okay? Maybe you set yourself up for that one. <laughs> Oh, yes. Okay, documents export. Here we are with our five files. So let's go ahead and uh, extract to networks. And now we have that available. We're going to close and back to our main site. So, choose a file. It's down in the lower right. Uh, gosh, that's our download. Uh, that that open that open folder is. Uh, I already have it. Open. Oh, it's open. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. From like before. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Okay, valid input and. So those are three worksheets. They need to be named Routing Part and Work Center, and they have to be in sequential order, such and such. Okay. Cancel this one. And there you go. Okay, there we go. Okay, and it's left about as well as with PFAS input. And the, at that point, it's submitted, but it's not yet paid for. At that point, is going through and checking the input to make sure that it's valid, and that everything's okay for it goes. Right now, we have 
uh, the actual uh, service doing the checking at 30 seconds, and we have email service at, uh, you said 60 or 75? 60. 60? Okay. Is it possible to RDP to the server? 75. Or is that... Yeah, uh, absolutely. Just to see, like, just the... Can we send you the link? Yes, please. That'd be sweet. Well, that goes on. We can also show you that you can go from there to my PFAS files, which is where the files end up. And when successful, it will create a purchase now link and output. It will always reduce input files so you can read, uh, download files that you uh, submitted to the server. Right now we have, okay. we have right now we are have it set at six month uh, duration of existence, and after, the, after which time it's expunged. Alert emails happen. How often? How often do they get e alerts when they're well, they have their stuff deleted? Oh, there's a two week notice and a two day notice um, relative to a six month expiration date. Um, so a little harder to show here, but um, it it works. I tested it up. Um, it doesn't. It basically removes the record so the user doesn't see the file anymore. But at this point, it's still on the server just in case you want to do any maintenance and do archiving or you could add functionality and delete it anyways if you want. But I didn't, get, I didn't quite get there. And this is the email for, our, for success. It's received the file. Mm -hmm. It gives you a link so you can go to the purchase and download, which you already have open. So that email could probably be made. Those success and fail, they, they're functional. They have the information, but they could probably be made a little more. Um, pretty, I guess. You should have it, Mike. Okay. What are you using to send the email? Um, so you, you set up, um, we'll, we'll probably walk into the source here sooner or later, but you set up, uh, we, the, the services are both in C Sharp. Um, you set up an SMTP object, and then there's like a, a email, email message object, and you use those two. And uh, right now we have this capstone Gmail account. Um, you basically use that as the credentials, and then the record has this, um, each record has an email that I'm pulling from, and I kind of just arbitrarily put those through, send it to whatever email I'm given, um, and delete it. So, you know, <clears throat> there isn't, um, there's probably, you know, there's probably more checks that could be put in to make sure that the email goes through, or this or that, but right now it, it's been, you know, we've been giving it successfully, or real emails, and it's been sending successfully. Okay. <clears throat> so, yeah, and then with the uh, expiration, um, it just uh, takes the upload date, and it just checks the current date versus it, and there's this hard-coded number of days, which would be two weeks until six months, and two weeks till, or two days until six months. Then it, those are two separate emails. Um, they look similar. Then it, it just then it does a delete statement that just says, "Delete from table all that all all records that are older than six months." Um, so that'll have that'll happen on everything, but you know you usually won't delete anything. Okay. That's pretty much all the email service does. Here's a look at the back end. <laughs> Is that where Dave scrambled in class? <laughs> yeah, it worked. Yeah, he did. Um, so uh, I'll just show you where were we at in the front end. We were, you were purchasing. Uh, yeah, we were in the middle of the sing. We were at the single run page where they could uh, select the fifty fifty dollar single run product to put into their cart. Okay. I'm sorry, I'll just show that real quick. And continue the server. All right, I'm gonna go back here. So when they click, uh, when they're on their my my PFAS files page. Uh -huh. um, and they click uh, purchase now. Uh, that, that brings them to this page. This is the WooCommerce plugin for uh, okay. WordPress. WordPress. Uh, my, Mike Zazon was using this previously. To uh, they were like uh, using this for sales on the site. So we just continued to use that to sell the single runs uh, of the input file. Um, so they have to add it to the cart, and then they go to view cart and uh, proceed to check out. And this right here, so they have put in all their uh, user information for the sale. And this would be, uh, so right now, uh, WooCommerce, they're uh, using PayPal to make the payments. So when you click Place Order, um, we have it set up right now with just a developer PayPal account. 
Um, okay. We created a developer PayPal account, and these are just sandbox accounts that we're using for the demo. So uh, this would be an example of a user paying for the file. They'd log in, and then they'd click uh, Pay Now to pay the $50. And I guess right here we were kind of wondering if like uh, we didn't get to it, the uh, there might be like a better way to like redirect back to the PFAST uh, page, the website. Uh, it says right here you can click click here to return. It kind of might be nice to just auto return. I think that's there's like a option to be able to do that. But once they get back to the site here, it says uh, order received. This is all handled through the WooCommerce plugin, um, and we added this button here. Uh, we added this button. There's a template in the WooCommerce plugin page, just a PHP template that we added this button in, uh, just a link to uh, go back to their files page. And as you can see here at the bottom, uh, there's now that they paid for it, uh, they can download the output file now. So the way, uh, I'm going to hop back over onto the uh, server now. And just kind of show some, just kind of explain a, couple, a few front end things. Um, so inside WordPress, uh, most of the hooks we, the big hook that we added that uh, since, since the uh, notification that they paid is in uh, WooCommerce's uh, inc it's includes. Plugins. Plugins. It's under plugins, WooCommerce, and then they have a WooCommerce hooks.php file. So within that PHP file, there's a uh, you can look at actions that happen, and there's like an order complete action, and uh, basically you're able to gather uh, the order ID. At that point, we're able to uh, create like a user object, see what user belonged to that order. And from there, we were able to write to the database that they had paid for the file. And that's how we're um, handling uh, uh, to notify the website, basically, hey, instead of a purchase now link, show a download now link. OK. I'm going to go back here for a second just to show you where, where, um, when users are uploading all of these files um, inside the WordPress folder, so this is our main uh, web directory. Our, it's our main web directory here. So everything WordPress is in the WordPress folder, uh, but uh, all the files when they're uploaded, the P, when the PHP uploads them, um, it moves them to this folder, this PFAST user files folder, and it's creating a folder by the username of the person. So we were just logged in as OSU Capstone. So that upload that we just did moved the input file. It uploaded it to the server in this folder and these are a bunch of previous submissions that we haven't deleted yet just <laughs> um, so the most recent one here's the one that we just did we have uh, every time they submit a uh, input it creates a folder based on the date down to the second um, so within that users uh, folder just to kind of uniquely identify that run and then it creates two folders inside input output um, inside the input folder, you'll have uh, this is where PHP moves the Excel um, file, the input Excel file, and within output, this is where the service um, Dave, my, Dave will probably, Dave Holmes will, or Spencer will probably talk about this. They did more on the back end, but this is where the service will end up moving after the command line PFAST code creates the output. This is where it ends up moving it to is into this the user's output folder, and then I'm able to. On the front end, recognizing the database that the output has been created, um, I'll show you the. You say the workbench is open. Yes. Right there. I'm just going to show you through PHP my admin here. Uh, so when uh, the input file is submitted, just to show you uh, database stuff on what the front end's writing, uh, we have 
three tables we added into the WordPress database, the My, MySQL database. Um, okay. These top three tables here, the PFAS input jobs, PFAS results, and PFAS user files. Uh, the PFAS input jobs is like an input queue, basically as um, we upload files, the PHP code is writing to this, uh, uh, is writing to this database here. Um, and the service on the back end is mo will be monitoring that database table to look for jobs that are coming in. And once a job comes in, it sees that, and then it begins processing, runs it through the command line, and uh, creates the output. Once the output's created, it then writes a row to the results table, which we have, which the email service is monitoring. So whenever a row appears in this, the email service knows, hey, some type of result happened. Um, it could be an error. There could be an error in the result, or there could, it could be a successful result. Um, either way, the email service picks it up, um, sends out an email to the user, um, whether it be a success or a failure, and then it deletes it from this. Same way on the top, on the top table, uh, the initial the initial service that uh, sees the input come in deletes from this table once it's done uh, creating the output. Um, I'm going to hop back over to the server again. Okay. So this is back on the server. I'm going to go in the WordPress folder here. Um, I'm just going to uh, give you an overview here. A couple. This is included in the documentation that we'll be sending. Um, but just give you an overview of a couple of the PHP files that uh, we created on the front end. Uh, All right. So we created one called download.php right there. And there's another one called uh, uploader. uploader right there. Those two PHP files, uh, I'll start with download.php. This handles uh, basically all the downloading of the files, uh, the input file, the output file. Um, it checks uh, which user, which user's logged in through WordPress, and then it's able to um, basically sort, um, uh, queries the database for um, which file um, needs to, the download link needs to be created for and uh, puts that on the website. Um, up, right. Uploader.php, that's where, uh, that's, that's what's called right when they click the submit button. It calls the uploader.php and that's what's handling moving the files to the, um, to the server in the, the PFAS user files folder. So uploader.php handles moving it to the, handles moving the files, creating the directories, um, in the top folder here. Um, what did you say? Then we have our two of the size. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Those are, those, those are the old ones, right? Those, yeah, those are old. Um, oh, yeah, I kind of mentioned the, uh, the themes, how, uh, like, the page on the front end. I'll just get it up here and show you. Uh, the pages on the front end, uh, for example, this submit page. If you go to edit in WordPress, you'll see like not everything's here. The last thing here is like, please select the project you would like to add to or create a new project. Well, if you go back to, uh, so please select a project. So if you go back here, that's the last thing here. That's because all of this information is added through the template for that page. Okay. And I'll go ahead and show you on the server. Um, so all the templates, all the templates that we added, um, the current theme that Mike was using on the WordPress site was this uh, what was it? Scroll editor. Scroll editor theme. Yeah. And uh, so we created two template uh, PHP files. These two right here. And like I said, this is in the documentation too, but we created these two template files, and uh, the the page that we were looking at, which is the input page. So this handles generating all of the the drop down menu. It's uh, querying the database to see what projects the user has to be able to list what projects they could add to. Um, uh, it also creates all the uh, the but the button to submit all the text fields and everything on the page. Basically, it's PHP code. You know, echoing all the HTML code um, that needs to be generated. Um, then for the uh, software as a service template, 
this is uh, hand, this is the template file that is uh, that we use to generate the my PFAS files page. Uh, so like I think I don't even know. If you go to edit here, um, it stops at input your input. So yeah, right there is where it stops, and the template handles creating everything here. Creating this this is basically just a table that we're populating with uh, information from the database. Uh, that PHP file, uh, this PHP file within there is uh, okay. Oh. Getting a little feedback there. <laughs> Sorry about that. That was my chair. Oh, you're good. Uh, so this this template file here is creating that table. Um, it's querying the database for what users logged in again, and then it's uh, handling um, basically creating that table with each project sorted by projects, and then uh, all the submissions for each project under it. So that's what that uh, template file is doing. And I'll just show you that real quick uh, in WordPress. Are you are you pretty familiar with WordPress? Uh, have you used? Yeah. WordPress? Okay. Good. Uh, so like the template file uh, right here, this is where you assign, when you're on a page, you assign the template file you want to use. I would say m the majority of all the pages on the site use the default template. Well, we were using the custom templates, so those two custom templates are uh, located here, and that's where we selected them. And click update, and after you switch the template, that's when it generates everything below here. Okay. Um, and you, you might even be a little more familiar with that than I am. Uh, a lot of the, the, the modding WordPress. WordPress yeah. So, if you want to take them through Woo WooCommerce, just plug it quickly. Mm, yeah. yeah. Okay. So Woo WooCommerce uh, also has been able to do that pages back end. If you go down to their up, there's two tabs for it. One is uh, just creating, going through orders, reports, what have you, and system status. And the other is products, which allows you to modify the product. Attributes including, well, most importantly, the price. A few of the old products are available here that are not obviously not showing. We have single run, which is set as hidden, but uh, shows up when a uh, person is actually trying to make a purchase. Right now, okay. it's at fifty dollars in stock. So, if there was any changes that needed made, like if you wanted to change the title or anything, you would go to this page. These were some of the old ones Mike had on, uh, Mike had on the website and they were using before. Right now on our uh, dev site, uh, we, oh, we're not showing any of these products. So um, just to give you an idea there. Have you have you done uh, a lot with uh, Woo or done stuff with WooCommerce before? I have not. I have just read about it. Okay. okay. Um, go ahead and show them the orders page. WooCommerce orders. Oops. So all the or whenever they create or it gets an order number and this explains what they did, it shows that it's paid for when the order went through. Um, on top of that, we ha have telephone con and email contact information. So in addition to them receiving email through our service, you also have their email in case something does go drastically wrong and you need to get a hold of them. Okay. Reports uh, will probably be more for Dr. Arati, but reports tab. For there also has information how it, how the sales are going over a certain amount of time to track things there. Okay. Okay. Let me let me let me come over just to verify that. So when we when we deployed this, uh, Michael, we uh, in the WordPress folder, um, basically putting those PHP. You have to have those PHP, the, the uploader and the downloader PHP files there, the two template files, um, and the WooCommerce hook PHP file. Um, we made some changes to that, and then if you remember on the uh, on the order received page, there was a button that, like I said, there was a button that to uh, click to go to my PFAS files. That was in a thankyou.php file in, uh, in the WooCommerce, uh, just like overriding uh, the order received page for that. So uh, the documentation will talk about that more, but just wanted to give you an idea. Uh, all those files are placed in here. So if you started with a fresh WordPress, uh, if you ever started with a fresh WordPress, like uh, if Mike gave you their current site, that didn't have any of this implemented and you had to stick these files in, 
you would drop those, uh, the documentation will show you where to drop the PHP files into, and okay. like that, so. Are, is your code unit tested or anything, or? I know it's kind of hard to do that with WordPress, but I'm just, Man, just curious. We managed to test um, a file file as well as several of the Erich files, which currently uh, uh, file this is about output, and we are able to also um, have the error files produce uh, error message and also send the valid error email to the recipient. Okay. Yeah. Beyond that, as for any particulars, um, one of the things we are are hoping uh, is a specifically a stronger lockdown on SQL injection. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so things things we kind of wanted to make note of that on the front end that we didn't uh, get to right away that we we're still um, looking to do. Um, as Nick was saying, any type of attacks on this, we didn't have. Um, right now, it's running JavaScript to basically just check to see uh, check to see what they have in there. As you can see, this pop up okay. it comes up. Um, there could probably be some better guards there for a lot of, uh, like you said, SQL injection yeah. type yeah. attacks. And, um, are you um, are you using the built-in escape functionality in PHP or uh, for no. those fields at all? No. Okay. Um, so that's something that could be added. The other thing is right now, um, right now if you log out, this is this would this would probably be a probably one of the important fixes. Uh, one of the first fixes uh, I would suggest. Um, so right now I'm completely logged out. Um, we didn't add, we still needed to add a check for if the user was logged in or not to really submit a file. So right now, right now a user is not some signed in, they can submit a file. Obviously we don't want that at all. Um, okay. In that template file, in the uh, PFAST user input template file, in the themes folder, um, there's capability there. Um, like you might be more familiar with that than I am. They'd be able to add, you know, whether the user's logged in, um, to, and then if they're not logged in, direct them to a login page, and then come back to this if they tried to submit a file. Same way with the same way with the my fast files. Like, so I'm not logged in right now, but yeah, I'm still able to view this page. Um, do you, the, just the question is, you would, would we want a, the user to be able to view this page or direct them to a login and then let them use it, view this page? Um, right now, the user's not logged in. It's not going to show any files, but. Um, do we actually want them to even see this at that point? So, um, other than that, is there anything else? Front end wise? I think front end that covers most of the situations. Uh, I think at this point, uh, turn over to uh, Dave and Spencer for the back end. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is quite old. Um, it it's, <laughs> was written, I believe, originally in the early 90s, like 91, 92. It's uh, yeah. all C++. It's, it's pretty intense code, actually. Um, and one of the interesting, one of the challenges we had when we first got it um, was that we, we weren't able to port it from Visual Studio 6 to, uh, Visual, to a newer to version. 2010. Virtual Visual Studio. And it's actually, the, we weren't the first ones to tread this ground. Um, Min Wang... Um, who is a professional developer these days, uh, had done the same thing. And I, I think she actually had some limited success with it, but um, it was a yeah. uh, try. Yeah, I know men, and, and it was a pain in the ass project then. So, okay. Yeah, so she, 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 she simply said that the, the build was unstable. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, long story short, rather than waste half the semester trying to port code uh -huh. forward, we just kind of work with it in, in Visual Studio 6. Mike was, uh, Mike Cezanne was, was good enough to get us a copy of Visual Studio 6, which aren't exactly uh, on the shelves these days, but we got it and we were able to, to, to build it in there. Um, and as, as it turns out, we didn't really need to build too much, because again, we, we, we were working with Min, and um, she was nice enough to kind of help, or basically she did 99% of the work, uh, rework the uh, existing GUI application to a command line interface. 
so we were able to uh, shell execute it out of our out of our service. Okay, so it, it is it is to a um, CLI interface um, point at this at this moment. It is yes. Okay. Yeah. I, originally, we I wanted to kind of take that source and kind of use like a P invoke sort of sort of deal. Um, you know, rebuilding the XE as a DLL and just calling directly into the methods, but it it we were having a lot of problems with it, and Min was nice enough to rework it as uh, command line, and we just kind of seized that opportunity. So, okay. I mean, is it the best solution? Probably not, but it, it's effective um, for what we're doing right now. I mean, ultimately, yeah, I mean, you'd love to just kind of get away from all of that, but it is what we're doing right now for better yeah. or for worse. Um, yeah, so, you know, because it's the command line, it's reliant on the old technologies it was built on. So a lot of the challenges we, we, we end up running to this command line, it works, men's like, it works, it works. We try to run it on, on our comparable systems. Um, apparently, we don't know for sure what really causes it, but even if you bring on some of these DLLs that men had that we didn't seem to have, having newer versions of Visual Studio some complications arose and the program basically got about halfway through and then kind of cut out. Um, we got it to, there's kind of an intermediate point where it dumps a bunch of, bunch of XMLs and then there's kind of a final point where it puts the result, it got halfway through. Um, so we basically, we found that it's, it's working with Excel 2003, that's, it's dependent on that version of Excel or Office, and then uh, Visual Studio 6.0 and that's, that's like, that's it. We ran it pretty clean with that stuff didn't mess with okay. a lot of other stuff installed, so whether or not you run into complications installing, it seems the newer version of Visual Studio seems what breaks it. Yeah, yeah, that's, okay. that was our experience. We tried so some to, tweaking could probably get you there even with it on there, but we didn't have enough time to really do that tweaking. Yeah, it's difficult to find redistributables for Visual Studio 6 um, yeah. that are not, you know, actually that, that don't actually get installed when you install Visual Studio 6 itself. Um, so... I don't know if there's some sort of a. We suspect there's some sort of file within that within that package that's kind of gotten replaced or appended to in the newer versions of Visual Studio that's causing a problem with with the original PFAS code. We're not we're not really sure. And Min took again took. She's much more familiar with the original source code than we are. Uh, she took a decent amount of time to look at it, and, and she wasn't quite sure what was going on either. So, long story short. We just recommend on the on the actual deployment server to install Visual Studio 6. Again, this is not a great long-term solution. The whole thing needs to be brought forward at some point, but it, it works. If it's just Visual Studio 6 and you have to at least have Office 2003, although you can have later versions of Office. Okay. Um, <clears throat> did, you, did you have a question? Uh, no, just just looking. I'm looking at men's report. I don't. It's been a while, so. <laughs> I don't remember what. Yeah. It yeah. Was anyway, pretty complex and a lot of stuff that it didn't seem like. She just said, "Don't retry it to us." So <laughs> yeah, that's something for a longer term project, probably to to re pull it into the modern era. Okay. Um. What else? Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll, if you, in case you don't have it, we have a copy of Min's report that's provided to us. Uh, we can. We'll make sure that gets in the documentation as well. Yeah, I've, I've, supplied, I've supplied you is the full source code that Min did for us, which is the command line source code. So you can uh, you can do whatever you want with that. Um, the only okay. change, the only change I made to that was I changed the um, directories of, of it normally it normally kind of looks for PFAST output like directly on the C drive. I just kind of mm -hmm. moved that within a PFAST directory just so this not stuff all over the place. That was that was all I changed. I just changed two strings and rebuilt it. Um, Everything else was her. Uh, so the majority of the work we did was the stuff all around that, obviously. So we wanted to <clears throat> build a service to handle the movement of the input and output files, the storage, and uh, the error checking. Um, so that's that's an emailing. So that's basically what we did with a with a shell execute interface to to the existing program. Um, I guess one of the, one of the unique th this unique things about I guess kind of shell executing with Microsoft Office and that and this this again is going to be it might be a problem going forward with later versions of Windows. It seems like the service needs to be able to interact with the desktop 
for whatever reason because Microsoft Office is apparently an interactive program. So that's one of the requirements of our services is that it has to be allowed to interact with the desktop. Um, from my, what I understand in later versions of Server 2012 and, uh, and beyond, Microsoft's making that more and more difficult to do uh, because it's uh, suspect to malicious attacks and things like that. Or, or uh, um, Yeah, so I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, it, this, these are the sort of things that need to be looked at going forward long term. We just didn't have the time or, or really the expertise to kind of uh, go into all that this semester. So... Um, I'll just kind of just walk you through the code we do. Um, so the main the main process is what we call PFAS service. Um, it's it runs as a Windows service. It's a completely C sharp based service. Um, you can see here on screen. It's here's here's the service launcher. Um, this is your standard main method creates launches a new instance of uh, PFAS service and and runs it. If we move over to PFAS service itself. I uh, see the, the basic the basic idea is that we have a timer um, running every well, it looks like right now I have it set to 10 seconds you can change it to whatever you whatever you like 30 60 um, found 10 to be sufficient without putting a heavy load on the system so every every 10 seconds when this timer elapses we um, we move into a method where we uh, basically are going to query the um, I don't have my SQL up on this server. Where we're going to query the PFAST input jobs um, table for new jobs that come in from from the front end. So the upload, the code that was put in on uh, the files that were uploaded on the front end were taken by that PHP and moved into this uh, into the um, PFAST input jobs uh, table. So. Um, you can see here, I, I tried to put as, as many notes as I could where, where we had kind of weird things going on or anything that's not kind of understandable or where I, uh, where I think it, things could be improved. Um, so as you're going through that, you'll probably, you'll probably see those like here. Um, we, I, I don't know if I want to get this right now, but, but, but uh, like we were having a problem with um, Closing the Excel uh, application after uh, after it was using, we we couldn't basically we were having trouble hitting all the, all the different cases where it needed to be done, um, mostly when when exceptions happened and things like that. So, running out of time, we basically did this this hacky um, thing at each time the service runs, where it just checks to see if there's any open processes of Excel or PFAST and, and just shuts them down before trying to do anything again. Okay. So those are the sort of things that, that, that could definitely be improved, um, but they're effective for the moment. Um, so basically, this we the timer fires off, we pause the timer, and we, we query for jobs. Um, so we come into this job processor. Um, so this job processor basically uh, gets a new database connection. We have a database connection class over here, which is uh, you know pretty standard stuff. Just connects to the MySQL database. Um, yeah, you're your connection string, you initialize, open. Um, there's nothing, nothing. Looks like Igor was your uh, your instructor. <laughs> well, he was for a short amount of time. Uh, we are sad to report that uh, he had a brain tumor early in the season. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Yeah. So we had a okay. Dave Thomas uh, instructor in class from that point on. John Thomas. Okay. Strong. Dave Thomas. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh. Okay, so um, you know, basically that's what's going on. We are, we're querying that database, we're pulling back information, um, we're reading through it, storing it off in local variables. Um, pull back, based on that, I pull back more information from the PFAS user files um, table, so we get kind of the full picture of what's going on, directory structure, email addresses, um, et cetera, et cetera. So we're reading through, doing some work on the file, file names and things like that. And then basically, this is where it gets a little interesting. I guess we we check to make sure the input file exists. Um, if it doesn't, we write some sort of an error out to the results table and, and kill the job. Um, and so once we've determined there isn't actually is an input file, we run it through the input validator, which is where all well, the error checking happens. Um, <clears throat> so this guy basically uses like the uh, Excel interop uh, interface. Um, uh, 
to to connect into that, that Excel file and basically walks through it and tries to do all the error checking that we were uh, were told to do in, in the requirements meeting. So it's like basically like you know I mean you can see here basically that it's the right amount of columns, um, the names are, are proper, that the the the, uh, the type of the cell is correct. You know whether it's numeric or text based. Um, Basically, we do checks on like uh, referential integrity. If there's a part number in the um, part number or the part uh, uh, sheet, it has to be in the routing sheet. Things like that, all the way down. Um, <clears throat> so that I hope is pretty complete. Um, I I believe there might be a problem um, with sheets that have like extra rows that don't have any data in them. I, We've seen a couple of weird errors when we were testing. Um, we believe it has something to do with that. So uh, it's it's that that area might need to be improved a little bit. Um, but we seem to be pretty good in like just we find the error anyway and just kind of you know write it out with an unknown error to the results table. Um, okay. But it could be better handled. So, okay. Um, so yeah, this is all error checking, error checking, error checking. Um, so we come back to the job processor. So if it passes that, um, this is basically when we feed it into the existing PFAST EXE program. And so we, we just fire up a new process, um, give it all the all the um, um, parameters uh, and whatnot. And so we're basically um, we basically have a couple things here where we're not creating a window and we're not shell executing. Um, this is so like nothing comes up uh, on the server um, for, the, for the user to, to see or interact with why it's going on. Um, so we just give it the, the proper directory um, and, and start it. And at that point, we basically um, move to an output monitor. Uh, the output monitor is kind of just, it, it sleeps for 15 seconds. Um, you know, just because we didn't want, to, we ran into a couple of problems. When we didn't have a sleep, we ran into problems uh, before where the file would appear in a directory, but it hadn't finished been written to yet. So we were trying to move a file that was still in process, um, which caused an error. So we just kind of put in a, a little safety gate there, um, which should be okay. Um, so basically, we just we just basically check this directory every every second for thirty seconds, um, looking for the output file. If we find it, we we. Exit out of here. We we head back. Um, if we don't find it, we if we don't find it. We come back in and we decrement the job retry um, method or a method field uh, that's associated with the input job. So each job has a, a job retry associated with it. So it's allowed to fit. Like in the case where we don't get an output file and we haven't detected an error coming in, um, we'll retry it. We have a default of five. We'll retry it x amount of times, um, just in case there was like a some some load on the server or something went wrong. Um, we'll try it like you know right now it's five times um, before we we actually kill the job and just write an error out to the results file. Um, so yeah. Is this uh, does it run? So say five users um, submit the jobs all at once. Does it run through? One at a time, or does it spawn a thread for all of these? It runs through one at a time. Uh, we okay. there was no, I mean, there was no, I don't know, pressure on having anything done in like a super timely manner like that. So okay. because this is just yeah. a, a slow process, we're yeah, able we to don't just, we don't anticipate heavy demand for the process, even in this format that would re require multi-threading. Which the okay. the asynchronicity of the whole email thing kind of implies a sort of patience, I guess. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, it's just it's just a, a, a first in first out uh, sort of queue. Um, okay. And like I said, if it if it fails five times without an error being detected, it, it it's removed from the queue, so it doesn't hog up space forever. Okay. Um. So yeah, so we get the file. Um. If we if we do actually get it an output file, we write it back to remove it to the, the output file path, which was is basically just a folder, an output folder that is in the same WordPress directory as the input file. Um, we update the database with that proper, with that, that new um, directory, a new file name, um, you know, error checking, um, 
and failed to look at the file, blah, blah, blah. And um, I think that's, you know, that's more or less it. I mean, you got, we have a lot of error checking and stuff in here, but um, that's that's basically the uh, the crux of it. At the, okay. It's the log. Is the emailing functionality in this one or in a separate service? Yeah, different services. Um, you know, obviously, I think you could, um, I don't know. I. I think I, they, maybe they could have been implemented together, but you know, two different people working on two different services, and it still would retain the functionality we needed. We had no problem with them being asynchronous like that, so we just went ahead and did two different installed services. Yeah, I think we, we since we, the email service is almost a little extraneous to the normal PFAS processing, I think we wanted to leave that separately. So if you wanted to take that out, if you didn't want to email or you know you want to get rid of that, you can easily do that by stopping the service. And it keeps a little modular just in case. You know. yeah. Yeah. If one needs, if the email service needs to go down for a bit for repairs, the other one's still running. Yeah, because the important thing, you know, having, having files process is more important than that. Um, that's all that I have to pull, I'll just pull my name from the drive. Oh, you, you want to step through it? Yeah. Yes. Um, I think I'll go ahead and step through the uh, email service now. Um, it'll take me a second. I got to pull the solution off the drive really quick. Um. <clears throat> While he's doing that, Michael, I'm actually just now emailing you uh, the Dropbox link. Um, it's going to have, like I said, it's going to have all of our documentation for the class that we did, uh, all the source code, um, everything to do with the services. I included the whole WordPress folder. Um, actually, I included PHP my admin in there, too. But, uh, yeah, so when you unzip that, you'll, you should be able to kind of see where our card is laid out. I'm actually firing that away. It's coming to you right now. Okay. Yeah, just shoot me a reply if you download it, and I'll probably be taking it off my Dropbox. So. Okay, it looks like it's copied over to my Dropbox. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's scrap that really quick. Yeah, that would be great. Give it on Dropbox. Cool, I can copy it right now. The Dropbox ID um, it's mzazon at gmail.com. <coughs> Yeah, is that possible? Yeah, I can look into it. Um, maybe we can just use the file and just it right That'd on. be sweet. Yeah. If that's possible, that'd be awesome. Because I'm sure we'll just do the same same hosting. Yeah. Are you doing a free trial right now? Yeah. Yeah, for 30 days. Cool. I wonder how much that'll cost monthly. We'll see. Honestly, I mean, we've been using a ton of the now. Okay. That's good. That's good. <clears throat> I'm not Yeah. Thank you. Uh, all right. <clears throat> um. Oh. So you know, Dave also had a, a database connect. I I took kind of a similar template, most likely. Um, Customize a little bit for my use. I'll kind of go through that first. Because we, we know the service requires one. Um, so, you know, connect parameters have had them from before. You know, Lumens are on it, or uh, Eagle and all that stuff. Um, open connection, standard. Um, <clears throat> I have a few kind of like custom where you normally would have just like delete and have to kind of be general. I have the delete expired file records. So, um, you know, you have your connection, you're going to run through uh, 
date time um, for C sharp and MySQL are not the same. Um, so you have to kind of adapt the, the format. And then this is that general query where um, this is the user files. It's just kind of this archive of the files we have. If the upload date is older than this expired date, go ahead and, just, and then you just run that query. So it just kind of blankly runs every time. If it's old enough, it gets deleted. So okay, uh, I just have that available for when I run um, the result jobs. Basically, running you shoot those emails off, and you because we treat the result table like a queue, um, so that just uh, truncates the fastest way to clear out a table, I guess. So we just use that. Um, I have a couple select state select statements that I just kind of hard coded. Um, select all from PFAS. What I did is uh, uh, I was kind of recommending me on the end <laughs> to be honest, but uh, I loaded them into a a list of string lists. Um, and basically, what it does is each indices kind of acts like one of the columns, and then that you just add uh, each of the records, and they kind of are just in sync with each other. Um, it seems kind of awkward, but it, it works really nicely when I go to like actually uh, use it. Um, okay. And then a uh, similar one, you know, it's basically the same thing with here, but I had to customize it because of the different column names. Um, so those are those. Count, that's pretty obvious. Um, just whatever table you pick will count the records. And then I just have a, a, a write log. Um, it's, <laughs> it's probably not the best log log function you can write, so that could probably be up there and be a little more professional. Um, so I'm going to move over to the email service. Um, okay. Kind of, you know, you're going to obviously see some similar structure to Dave's because of the template that uh, you kind of have to follow. Um, yeah. I, may, I have a decent number of, of private bars, but so a lot of decent number of them are just constant, so it's not as overwhelming as it is. Um, so I go ahead, you know, initial, and then I set, I have two different timers running. Um, one for the email service of results and one for the email service of doing expirations. Uh, one set, right now, I just, I put it to uh, 75 seconds, um, and then uh, the other ones, that huge number is essentially, that's one day. Um, so okay. Once a day, that will run, and uh, it works for the functionality because um, I, I don't do exact days down to decimals, I take them by integer. So then once per day, it matches um, some integer on the, on the expiration date. Um, once start, these timers all um, instantiate and start um, on stop, on pause, on shut down. It's all standard stuff. So uh, that, this is the expiration timer lapse. So this is once a day. Um, I go ahead and run. I go ahead and call. Uh, first, I do the count on the user files. Just, it's never going to be zero, but you go ahead and do it anyways. Um, pause the timer. Um, get that list ready. Get all those input files in that list. And then um, I call this expire warning. Um, I'll go down that in just a sec. Um, Write the log. You know, I'm trying to try to log a decent amount just to kind of keep it obvious. Um, they exist in PFAS law, so it's not a hard to find area. And then delete expired file records, which I walked through before. Okay. Um, and then the second one, uh, timer elapsed. So that's I just I left that name. I probably could be a little more uh, descriptive. This is the one that sends the result emails. Um, do another connection dot count, very similar structure, get the list ready, pull the result result jobs into the list, send the result email, write the log, um, truncate the table, because what I do is I send all those emails at once, um, right after another, and then I just clear the table. Um, because uh, well you'll see in a sec here. Uh, write log. Alright, so now I'm gonna go through the uh, expiration warning email sending. Um, uh, initialize account. Um, you'll see that in a second. Uh, here I'll I'll undo this stuff. So basically, here's the SMTP I told you about before. So you got this uh, SMTP object you can instantiate. Then you have to kind of assign, you know, a lot of these uh, uh, yeah these fields for it. So we have this uh, capstone email we we're running off of the port number that SMTP.gmail.com apparently needed. Um, then I went ahead and you have to you have to make a message. And that has some fields. So you, I have this uh, subject running every time. Um, and then I, uh, I create a new from, from a thing. Uh, and here's, and so basically, um, now I'm actually interacting with the list. Um, 
So I went, I basically, uh, it's kind of doing it for each off a list, but with lists of, it, I guess, one way you could do is use, use this delegate. Uh, yeah. Delegate. And so basically it just, it's, it's still just a for each. Don't, don't think of it any different. Um, so for each user email, um, I once again have to, uh, I have to parse the MySQL date time into C sharp date time. So that's here. And then I basically check for the two week notice. That's kind of why, just to make it read while I use those constants. So if this difference range is the two week notice, I just kind of, this is where I just kind of wrote out the body. I insert the project title, the subtitle, the upload date into the email according to what the record is showing um, and the username. Go ahead and just fsmtv.send, you send the message. Um, the same thing with uh, two day notice, do the range difference in days. So return an integer equals this constant integer I have for two day notice. Um, same format. Um, so that's that's for the expiry email. And then we've got basically one more function to run through and I'll be done. Um, send result email, exact same format you saw before. Um, go ahead, go through list, user email for each delegate user email. Uh, add, um, then I, I check, um, I check the is successful um, for each person. So this is kind of running through each. So that's why I have that count on there. Um, we have them as uh, tiny at one, which SQL reads as a uh, <clears throat> Boolean. So um, it's zero and one in the table, but it gets read as false or true. Um, so if is successful is false, I write a failure email out, which you can kind of read here, um, then dynamically putting in the username and then this description, um, which uh, Dave did a really good job putting putting those together, making them actually be readable and mean something. Um, so it actually the email kind of looks like actually pretty helpful when it ends up getting spit out. Um, and then for true, it's this one could look a, could look better, but it's a pretty vanilla success email with a link. It's basically ends up going to be a link to the login screen so they can go purchase their stuff. Um, send that message. Um, clear the recipients. Increment the count. So, if I'm sorry if I went too fast, it's, just, it's kind of dry, but um, I don't know. That's that's pretty much the whole email service. And obviously, there's there's some things more to implement there. As I said before, you can. Uh, I didn't actually delete any of those files once they expired. Um, that kind of depends on what you want to do with them. Um, and I think you know, there's for this this kind of passive service, just sending notifications here and there. It could just be beefed up to have more functionality, while still not remaining as essential as the process itself. Okay. Um, so that's well, that all makes sense. Yep. So that's all I got. That's what I got for you right now. Um, okay. And that's just the the big dump of zip files we gave you. The solution will just be in there, so you but should be able to just pull it up, compile it. Um, Visual Studio 2010 is what we use. 2010 for both the, both the email service and the PFAS service? Yeah, Dave and I made sure to use the same version for that, so just so it can be coordinated. Right. Okay, sir. Do you have any questions for us? Um, okay, so for the project, what, um, for the project plan that uh, you guys were originally hoping to do, what all did you not get done? Um... Error checking, error checking is a big one. We we got a lot of error checking out of the way, but right. we didn't get a re meet with Dr. Ronnie and show him those errors, which ones he needed to build on, or missed a couple. So definitely hit.